that's like halfway through the season. Things in the Klondike are going pretty well. We left the place in good hands, I think. The problem is that we're running out of ground to mine. 27-year-old Parker Schnabel has left his crew mining Klondike gold while he heads to Alaska. I started my life here, and my goal is to see if there's a lot better ground out there that we could be mining. With a war for ground raging in the Klondike, Parker needs to land a new claim to secure his mining future. How do you make that transition, you know, from mining in one place to the next? It's really difficult, and it's a lot. Of, it's a thing that a lot of miners get wrong. Um, you know, you, you do it too soon, and you're spread way thin. And if you do it too late, then everybody knows you're desperate. And as soon as people in business know you're desperate, you're. Parker's on his way to meet one of Alaska's biggest private landowners, the legendary John Reeves. John's definitely one of those guys that money talks and walks, right? And um, I'm trying not to be a but I'm going to always try to tie up more ground than we can handle. Hopefully, I can use a little persuasion and keep him from kicking us out of the deal before we really get a chance to get in there. Last season. As far as deals go, we're really looking for like large blocks of ground. Parker made a handshake deal to mine on 3,000 acres of John's ground. I think it's probably time for us to have a chat with these guys out of here. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's have a Get out of here, Dave. But the pandemic closed the border. Now, he must convince the land-owning giant to give him another shot. And this time, a handshake may not be enough. So we'll see if John and Drew are here. See what we can work out. Hello? Come, Come on, on in. Hey, Drew. How you doing? Doing well. Good to Good see you. Drew Langley is John's son-in-law and right-hand man. I just got a hold of John. He's on his way. Oh, sweet. He'll be here shortly. Right on. Hey, Parker. Hi, John. How are you? Long time no see, dude. It has been a while. Good. How you Good been? Good to see you. I've been good. Good. Yeah. Been good. We've been busy. Yeah, you're supposed to be mining up here. I know. This summer. I know. It's August. Yeah, it's been on the back of my mind that, or the front of my mind, I should say, mm -hmm. that um, that we didn't make it over here and get set up. You know, like you said, it's August now, and um, and that's why I'm here is just to sit down with you guys and talk about that and where we left off last year and um, kind of trying to pick things back up if we still can. Uh, you know, you got some excuses for not coming over and. A lot of them I can identify with. The world's been kind of crazy the last year and a half. So, you know, I just couldn't swing, like, getting a whole nother operation going at with this point in with what's going on in the world and what's what going on with us, you know? And yeah. But at the same time, I don't want to miss out on what's really good opportunity with you guys. You know, Parker, 35% of all the gold that came out of Fairbanks just came out of that ground. Right. So it's not what they took, but it's what they left. Right. John owns 20,000 acres of historically rich claims. Parker's convinced this land could be key to his gold mining future. So Parker, what do you want to do? Last year when we were talking and we did a little bit of drilling out there, like we definitely hit some interesting stuff and I was hoping to finish proving that up so we can get like a pit defined and like ready to be mined for, for the spring is really what I'd like to do. And I know that it's a big block of ground that, to keep tied up. And so I'm willing to do, you know, within reason what it takes to tie that up. You, could, you can tie it up, but I'm not going to just let you tie it up on a six pack. Um, I 
figured that this conversation. If you have something that you want to offer me to tie it up, I'm all ears. You guys need royalties. Well, so it, as a shine, as a sign of good faith on my end, um, I'm just going to bring you some royalties in advance if that works for you. And it'll just go discount towards future production. And if we never produce, it's yours to keep. I'm interested. So I brought that. Okay, Lou. I don't drink whiskey, dude. I'm a tequila man. It's not a bottle of whiskey, John. <laughs> Have a look. Yeah. You're going to want to look inside the bag. Yeah. What do you got in there? So that's, um, that's 100 ounces, like advance payment. Parker's deposit is worth $180,000. What do you think, Drew? Looks pretty good to me. OK, let's weld it. But we expect you to be mining, because if you don't show up next year and you're not mining, that's mine, and won't go against any future royalties. OK. Well, it's not, nothing like a little pressure. Good seeing you again, dude. Good to see you, too. We'll see you next time. All right. Well, I think that went pretty good. Like, we got a deal on some ground. I'm 100 ounces poorer, but we've got a very productive creek to go explore. I have a lot of respect for Parker for showing up like he did today. He's put enough of a down payment on his future for me to rely on our future. The guy knows what he's doing, and he's a young guy. And there's not a lot of young guys with that big. Parker secured the ground, but it's a huge gamble. He still doesn't know if the old timers left any gold. And of course, I'm going to hope that we come up with tons and tons of gold, but um, we'll just see. We better get a drill turning. I, I will admit I'm behind this year. I'm, I'm down on people, but I know for a fact that uh, this is going to work. So, Rick Ness is out to prove he has what it takes to hit it big. Once Parker's foreman, he's been on a roller coaster ride the first three seasons, running his own operation. 